so recently I did a video and usually I don't respond to internet trolls goofies but the individual who I did the video pertaining to said that we should all keep or try to keep an open mind about what he did and so that's in essence what I'm responding to now this individual Ryan House let's see if his advice about keeping an open mind if he took his own advice remember the year was 2020 and they told us all the healthcare professionals you know the field that he wants to go into all of the healthcare professionals told us to stay home and stay safe and yet in all of his great wisdom he chose to hop into a vehicle with strangers who he had met on the internet drive over to his friend's house steal an AR-15 that he promised he would only use if he asked for permission from his friend's father and he was driven all the way to Kenosha where in August of 2020 he alone was the only person to murder two individuals and then scurry back home like he had done nothing an open mind towards a serial killer Really? That's what we're asking to do nowadays? He himself didn't keep an open mind to all of what the expert medical and healthcare professionals were saying at the time. Do you all remember it was a huge hashtag all over the internet? Hashtag stay home, stay safe in 2020. It was one of the leading trending hashtags on the internet. Now, if you want to be a healthcare professional, as Rittenhouse, aka Rottenhouse, has claimed he wants to be one day, and you give expert health and professional medical advice to your patients, your clients, you would want them to take that medical advice, wouldn't you? So when all the healthcare professionals in this country were telling Americans to stay home and stay safe, why didn't he take that expert medical and professional healthcare advice? It wasn't like every 17-year-old individual hopped into a car complete with complete internet strangers and went on a murdering rampage in the summer of 2020. No. A lot of people did heed the medical advice. They did stay home. They didn't go on their usual summer vacations. People didn't even go back home to visit their family for Christmas. And yet, he wants now sympathy and says we should all keep an open mind for what he did. No. It doesn't work that way. And a lot of his goofy fan base, they left comments about juries and he, him being acquitted. 
And they didn't watch the video. And you want to know how I know that? Because one of the points that I was bringing up in the video was how broken our criminal justice system is. They act as though juries and the verdict in America is somehow historically been a good thing. For the longest time in this country, you couldn't even be on a jury unless you were an Anglo-Saxon white male. This is a fact. You had to be a property owning Anglo-Saxon white male to sit on a jury. And anybody who did grave bodily harm to an African American in this country generally was acquitted before lunchtime. In some cases, you could murder a black person and the jury would take six to seven minutes to deliberate before they would acquit you. So you really want to present to me evidence to say, oh, a jury acquitted him of murder. In this country, they have a long track record of doing such things, juries do. I don't know, come again, try again. See, a lot of these internet trolls and goofies, they don't know what they're talking about. And the shit that they usually say to someone else, they try it on us. And it doesn't go so well. I'm not like the usual. You're gonna really have to go and do your homework. This is the big leagues. And some of these internet trolls, you're out of your league. I saw your comments all about Newark. And what if you were in a in a situation shot and someone ran up on you? You're comparing apples to oranges. He didn't have to go to Kenosha. No one asked him to patrol a used car lot in the summer of 2020. No one. He admitted such in the jury. People say I should watch the trial. How do you know I didn't? That's besides the point. He admitted that no one requested his services as a quote unquote security guard for a used car lot. No one. No one requested any of those bums services who came there with their weapons wanting to play G.I. Joe. No one requested them. He could have taken expert professional health advice and stayed home and stayed safe. Now, you'll say the protesters, if they hadn't have been protesting, they would have stayed safe too. And you see, here's where we go into this two wrongs don't make a right. And I can reply back, but neither does one. So because people were outside protesting, as they're often doing in our society. You're saying because people were exercising their First Amendment right to protest and redress their government, that it's okay for someone to come who disagrees with their protest and murder two individuals? Is that what I'm hearing correctly? Because I guarantee you, if the situation were in reverse, and Rotten House was anti-conservative, and had gone to a conservative protest, and said, oh, well, you know, I felt the situation was hostile, so that's why I carried an AR-15 with me. 
and two conservative individuals wound up being murdered at a protest. I guarantee you, Rodenhouse would not be cheered on by conservatives who were by and large excusing murder. A serial killer. Look, I thought they were the party of pro-life. We all know they're not. But that's at least what they say. They're pro-life until it's to mere rights. And then the cop is justified because they fear for their life. They're pro-life until it's Trayvon Martin. And then George Zimmerman. He stood his ground. Notice how that works. They're pro-life but justify murderers who they politically agree with. Take note. No. Rodenhouse didn't have to go to Kenosha, Wisconsin. He could have stayed home and stayed safe. He could have listened to the medical expert advice that was given to all of us. It's not like every 17-year-old ran to Kenosha or ran anywhere and murdered people with AR-15s in the summer of 2020. So you can't even use that as an excuse that, oh, a lot of people did it. Because hardly anyone did it besides Rittenhouse. And I will say this. That in and of itself has led to all of these other mass shootings for political purposes that we've seen of late in our country. When they let one individual off the hook, that was a green light for all the rest of them. And you know, I think they knew that. That's why I said this was definitely, in my expert opinion, a military operation. I mean, all the individuals he was in the vehicle with were military. And he was a supposed paramedic, right? A medic, an EMT, with no credentials. A medic who doesn't listen to medical advice from the experts, telling him to stay home and stay safe. Some medic he's going to be in the future. Hopefully one that I will never have to see. I don't think I would want to take his expert opinion or advice seeing as he doesn't even listen to the expert advice when it's given to him think about that would you take medical advice in the future from a doctor written out when he didn't take expert medical advice from leading physicians all across America in the summer of 2020 Really, stop and think about that. He wants to go into the medical field. Yet, all of the medical field in 2020 told everyone to stay home and stay safe. And he disobeyed that medical advice. And two people wound up being murdered because of it. Who had a closed mind towards the medical advice in the summer of 2020? Rittenhouse did. Not me. I definitely stayed home and stayed safe. I had to deal with that lunatic from mar a being president. It was all kind of shit popping off every day. So to now come back and try to whitewash history and try to pretend that things that were said weren't said to all of us. Look, I know certain folks are good with whitewashing things. Critical race theory, whatever the hell that is, because I learned it was American history. People are always good with whitewashing shit. 
Have you heard the latest? George Floyd didn't die of a knee to his neck for 9 minutes and 22 seconds. It was a fentanyl overdose. You know, they're not liars. They're gaslighters. And one woman was recently explaining gaslighting and the difference between a gaslighter and a liar. A liar you might be able to convince is a liar. A gaslighter will do exactly what Rittenhouse did. When he saw the video and I said, Daryl Brooks and him are the same. They're both serial killers. Although certain people want to say one is demonic and one is angelic when they both done the same thing. So that got back to Rittenhouse and he sent his goofy fan club over here. All future serial killers in the making, I might add. Yeah, that's why they like Rotten House in a nutshell. Sorry to break the news to you, but they romanticize and fantasize about killing people they don't like. I don't give a damn if I'm on the list. Somebody said, oh, you might be on the list. Do you think I care? I hope I'm at the top of the list. I offend a lot of sensibilities with pleasure and glee. Especially conservative Christian Americans. Their sensibilities, I'm sure, are very fragile. So when those goofies come up over here and say, oh, self-defense, it's because, well, they romanticize about doing it themselves. That's why they love Rotten House. Because he got away with something in their minds that they can only dream of getting away with. And now he says keep an open mind. No thank you. This is an open and shut case. Nobody made him go and do anything. He did it because he wanted to do it. He did it because, well, he wanted to become famous. You remember the social media post that the prosecution put up? Four doors, more whores. He wanted a fan club, and he got one. You know, they say, be careful what you wish for. You might just get it. He became an internet sensation for being a serial killer. You got to put on there why though. And see, that's what he doesn't want to put on his little biography. The little line where he says, I'm famous because dot, 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 dot. I'm famous because I'm a conservative activist. I'm an outspoken conservative activist. Well, yeah, but why do we know you? I mean, there's a gazillion 17-year-old conservative activists. They don't all have millions of followers, huge fan clubs. You got to put how and why you're famous for being a serial killer. Look. That's never going to change just because a jury acquitted him. A jury acquitted O.J. Simpson, too. And then he wrote a book about how he got away with murder, right? Juries, they always get it right, apparently. Apparently, nowadays, that's the conservative talking point. No. He was the one with the closed mind. He was the one that should have listened to expert medical professional advice. And he did. And they say you reap what you sow. He made his bed and now he has to lie in it. 
And the reason he wants to try to convince everyone, including apparently me, you know, for a person that nobody watches or nobody cares about, I sure do feel like I get a lot of resentment, animosity, which is fine. It goes in one ear and out the other. It's like water off of a duck's back. I don't give a fuck. No. He was the one that had a closed mind in 2020. And now he's trying to convince us that he's the victim and not the individual he murdered who are truly the victims of his murder. No, he's not a victim. He's not a choir boy because we saw the video where he was punching and beating up that young girl, right? The internet video that everybody tried to censor. You know, you could talk about the victims and their past histories of violence. You could talk about them. But then anytime anybody tried to bring up Rittenhouse and his past history of violence, well, the internet didn't like that so much. But I don't really care what the internet likes. It's a fact. We saw him wielding and punching that girl in the parking lot. So we saw this violence long before Kenosha. Because that video was years prior to him running to Kenosha and murdering two people. And like I said, once a serial killer, always a serial killer. It is my firm and fundamental belief that Cal Rittenhouse, a.k.a. Rittenhouse, will again, in fact, murder. Now, it might not be publicized that he does it again, but he will. Because it's like a dog when they taste blood. They have to be put down. Because they'll always long for that taste again. It's the same thing with serial killers. He's going to murder again. Mark my words. Just like he punched that woman and that violence didn't stop there. The violence won't stop with him in Kenosha either. He's a sick individual. Deeply unwell. Narcissistic psychopath, extreme gaslighter, full of bullshit. Look, you can bullshit some of the people some of the time, but you can't bullshit all the people all the time. I'm not keeping an open mind to a serial killer. You can pal around with Congresswoman Warren Bogart, lunatic from Mar-a-Lago, yay. Nick Fluentes, Charlie Kirk. You can pal around with those sickles because you're sick. But please, for goodness sake, don't ask me to hang around sick people. Don't you know we have a virus? And they recommend the healthcare professionals that you wear masks. Socially distance and keep six feet away. I don't want to get sick like you people. And you're really, really sick. 